And in moving the illegal detention of Australian journalist Free Julian Assange bill to uh, the House, I uh, note that it seeks to enshrine an offence of seven years imprisonment for the head of a foreign government if the head of state uh, or if that, if that government detains an Australian journalist or requests another foreign government to detain an Australian journalist in the course of undertaking legitimate journalistic activity. And Mr Speaker, I have to tell you it gives me no pleasure in having to put this bill before the House today because by introducing it, it's a recognition that we're failing to protect the rights and freedoms of our own citizens. And I, for one, think that that is an absolute disgrace. Regardless of what you think of Julian Assange, whom this bill focuses on, the bottom line is that he is an Australian journalist. Uh, there's those people that uh, dispute that. You could say 100% uh, he is an Australian publisher who is being detained and punished for exposing the corruption of the powerful. The Biden administration, which has continued on the case against Julian Assange, is using one of our own to intimidate other journalists who even think about exposing uh, secrets and, and, and war crimes. They don't care about an Australian citizen in this case. He is dispensable. But at the end of the day, this is not about him. I'm not asking anyone in this chamber to actually like Julian Assange. You don't have to put him on your Christmas card list and no one has to agree with what he says or the way he carries about his business. But you don't have to like someone to stand up and say that the way they are being treated is plain wrong. An Australian journalist potentially facing 175 years in jail, an effective death sentence, for exposing crimes against humanity, corruption and shedding a light on the plight of the weak and vulnerable. As the editor-in-chief of WikiLeaks, uh, Julian Assange did not commit a crime. He simply reported the truth. Now, I understand you and many others may have heard things about Assange, so before I outline the substantive parts of the bill, let me get a few facts straight. None of the WikiLeaks publications resulted in Defence Force deaths. In August 2010, Pentagon spokesman Jeff Morell confirmed, and I quote, there was no evidence that anyone had been killed because of the leaks. Another Pentagon official had confirmed, and again I quote, the military still has no evidence that the leaks have led to any deaths. In 2010, our own Australian Defence Department task force concluded in the words of the then Minister John Faulkner, Quote, overall, the content published by WikiLeaks does not reveal any significant details about operational incidents involving Australians beyond that already publicly released. So there we have the first myth busted. Secondly, Assange did not hack anything. It was Chelsea Manning who accessed the information in question and passed it on to Assange. Now, the Biden administration, in continuing on the appeal, uh, to extradite Julian Assange is now, in effect, prosecuting Assange for carrying out regular journalistic activity, such as passively receiving information. Not hacking journalism. He should not be in prison. He was not even on US soil when he published the cables in question. And if the Biden administration is successful, it will, pub it will establish a dangerous precedent of extraterritorial prosecutions for the crime or the alleged crime of journalism. That means that any Australian journalist in any part of the world can be prosecuted for their work. We need to seriously think about the implications of this. Extraterritorial prosecutions are dangerous. We should not allow one of our own citizens to become the Biden administration's test case. But Assange has never been treated as a regular accused. When he was detained in the Ecuadorian embassy, he and his lawyers were spied upon by the Spanish firm UC Global violating basic due process rights. It was revealed after his arrest that two of his manuscripts, as well as his legal papers, medical records and electronic equipment was handed to the US government, to US officials by Ecuadorian embassy staff. This is not the weekend newspaper that we're talking about here, uh, Mr Speaker. They stole his legal papers, medical records, his personal notes and handed it straight to those who were prosecuting him. It is an affront to the principles of justice, natural justice, uh, that the Australian government has raised zero concerns about this clear violation of his privacy, as far as I'm aware. If this goes without condemnation, the implications are that any foreign country can do the same. Can you imagine if an Australian journalist uh, was detained and spied upon, upon by the then KGB, uh, the then Kremlin sought to use the evidence against him, 
would we have stayed silent uh, back in Cold War times? I don't think so. Uh, that's why we need legislation like this. Another fact that is overlooked is that a fair trial for Julian Assange is in effect impossible. If the Biden administration is successful in appealing the extradition, he will not be taken to a normal court where evidence is open, uh, like we have here in Australia. He'll be tried in the East District Court of Virginia, otherwise, otherwise known as the Spy Court. The judge handling the case will be Leonie Brinkemer. She is known for a hardline stance on issues of national security and the use of secret evidence that we won't know about will be, will, will be allowed. No defendant has ever won in that court. This is an affront to justice. This is not a fair go. That is un-Australian. And that's if he even makes it to that court. If Assange is extradited, he'll be subject to special administrative measures and detained in the Alexandria facility. He convicted the nor notorious ADX Colorado where people were buried alive. Uh, they have no contact with the outside world and they go slowly insane. There is a significant and grave risk of serious human rights violations if Assange is transferred to US custody. UK courts have recognised this. They blocked the extradition earlier this year because they know he is at risk of suicide if he ends up in the US. He is one of our own. The implications of his prosecution are serious. The precedent it, set, it will set will open the floodgates. And that's why we need to remember the broader global context in which this is happening and the urgent need for this bill. The fourth estate is under sustained attack globally. Democracy and freedom is on the line. In an increasingly volatile world, the role of the media in holding authorities to account has never been more vital. A world devoid of freedom of speech and freedom of the press creates a democratic abyss and undermines the liberal democratic values that Australia holds dear. Journalists and publishers play a crucial role in shining a light on human rights abuses, holding oppressive authorities to account and independently reporting facts, including allegations of corruption, civil unrest, conflict and war. That's when they're doing their job properly, rather than focusing on sideline issues, as some do. But the rise of authoritarianism and the inclination of oppressive regimes to censor, harass, detain, torture and engage in the extrajudicial assassination of journalists under the guise of national security or espionage offences has become an increasingly troubling phenomenon. The brutal killing of Jamal Kagoshi exemplifies the dangerous reality for journalists in all parts of the world. The Committee to Protect Journalists uh, estimates that between 1992 and 2021, 1,418 journalists were killed in the course of undertaking regular journalistic activity. This year alone, 274 journalists have been imprisoned globally uh, and a further 66 confirmed as missing. Censorship and methods of intimidation are commonly used, threats of prosecution and detaining family members. This bill therefore seeks to protect Australian journalists from politically motivated detention and prosecution by foreign powers such as those which engage in hostage diplomacy and or political persecutions in order to impede transparency, hide potential misconduct and human rights abuses and engage in prosecutions that subsequently result in the chilling effect <coughs> of for freedom of the press, thereby threatening underlying democratic values. It seeks to act as a deterrent. The bill seeks to clearly define journalism to uh, include conduct engaged in the regular course of legitimate journalism, such as publishing and passively receiving information, not conduct that will be subject to criminal prosecution, but journalistic activity. The core of this bill is section four. It seeks to enshrine an offence of seven years imprisonment for the head of a foreign government if the head of that, foreign, of that, if that government detains an Australian journalist or requests another foreign government to detain an Australian journalist in the course of undertaking legitimate journalistic activity. Section five addresses conduct engaged by agents of a foreign government, for example, if the head of a foreign government has contracted out the detention of an Australian citizen undertaking journalism, they would still be liable for prosecution. This would include security contractors and intelligence agencies. It covers journalistic conduct that is alleged to have occurred in any jurisdiction due to the recent move of the Biden administration seeking extraterritorial prosecution of Assange. Numerous reports suggest foreign governments charge journalists with offences such as sedition, national security and espionage breaches of respected, respective criminal codes and attempt to cloak and legitimise politically motivated prosecutions. Uh, this is the current situation faced by several Australian journalists, including Assange, but also Cheng Lei, who is being held at the behest of the Chinese Communist Party. That's why Section 4 provides a clause pertaining to the real underlying cause of detention, such as politically motivated persecutions. I present the bill. I note that there may not be a seconder, Mr Speaker. Uh, that is fine. Uh, the bill is there for all to see 
as is Assange's plight.